Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolfo Konkwo. As we have been reporting, the home of the Senator-elect Buruji Kashamo is under siege by officers of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. His house is surrounded by the officers since 4.30 a.m. this morning. We now want to go inside the house to speak with his attorney, Mr. Ajibola Oluyede who is right there in the house. Mr. Oluyede, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much, Rudolph. Okay. Please, can you um, tell us what's going on right now in the house? Where are you? Where is uh, the senator-elect? Well, I'm, I'm downstairs, and he is in the, I'm downstairs in the living room, and he's upstairs in his bedroom. Okay, okay. So where are the police? Where are the National uh, Drug Enforcement Agents? Where are they? Are they inside the building or outside? They are, they are inside the building and they are outside. When you say inside the building, inside the compound or inside the house? Inside the house. What are they doing there and what is going on? Well, apparently they are here, according to the leader who I have spoken to, they are here to arrest uh, Mr. Kashami. Do, do, did they show you a, a arrest warrant? That was the reason why we had a standoff, because they could not produce an arrest warrant, nor could they produce anything in writing that authorized them to carry out uh, this kind of uh, exercise. Now, now, did they say who sent them there? They said they were acting under the orders of their chairman at first, and then upon further prodding by me, they admitted that uh, their chairman had received the verbal instruction from the Attorney General of the Federation, and uh, I therefore that they decided to act in the manner we are seeing now. So what is the current situation? They are in the house, and uh, um, the, the senator-elect is upstairs. Uh, you are downstairs with them, I assume. What, 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 what are we waiting for? Well, uh, we finally uh, arrived at the compromise that if indeed they were carrying out an arrest and not an abduction, because the, the, the major debate today between me and the officers has been as to whether they were carrying out lawful activity on the one hand mm. and also whether they were carrying out an arrest or an abduction. Now, the reason why I question the, the legality of their action is because there is a court order made by the uh, Federal High Court in a pending case before the court. The case is pending before the Federal High Court right now, uh, and judgment is to be given. That order was, was made on the 20th of April. Okay. The, the, the order was made on the 20th of April, mm -hmm. and that order specifically required the Attorney General of the Federation and the NDLEA to stay all action. Those are the words of the order. Stay all action with regard to the alleged uh, extradition request, if any, or abduction. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I said to them, what you are doing now is illegal because you are violating a court order, which means you are not at all operating in accordance with the rule of law. That's the one part of it. Mm -hmm. The second part of it is that we don't know whether you're carrying out an arrest or an abduction. Because you claim that you are under instruction from the Attorney General of the Federation, you have nothing in writing from him, you have no warrant of arrest, you are here at 4 a.m. on a Saturday morning, and you claim you are making an arrest for the purpose of bringing him to trial on a Monday morning. It doesn't seem to be the truth. So we had a standoff on that basis. Ultimately, they came back to me 
and said they were confirming, they were acting on instructions of the Attorney General of the Federation, and uh, they were prepared to agree to the compromise. So I said, okay, let's consider a compromise. If indeed your purpose of being here is to secure an attendant at a proceeding, a court proceeding, whatever that might be, on Monday, then it shouldn't be too difficult for you to allow him to stay in his house, under house arrest, until Monday. So you can take him to Monday, then nobody will be uh, under any... Uh, 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 you know, anxiety mm. as to whether you were carrying him to the airport today to ship him out to America, as we suspect that you intend to do. Mm. So finally, they agreed and said, fine, they do not intend to ship him out to America. And as a result, they agree with me and uh, they will accept that he stays in his house. And on Monday, uh, we should come to the court to attend some kind of proceedings. We don't know what that proceedings will be about. We don't know how they intend to carry it out. We don't know what court they intend to uh, Take him approach. To. Mm. Yeah. But that's the position now. Okay, so effectively he's under house arrest. Yes. Okay. Now, um, you talked about the Attorney General, and um, did you... Uh, did you try to reach out to the Attorney General to confirm what they said? We have, the Attorney General's telephone lines were switched off all day. And in fact, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, the telephone numbers, the telephone lines were switched off all day today. And so I, I couldn't reach him. But other people have attempted to, to reach him. And I believe they did. Uh, what did you hear from them? Well, it, it appears it appears that he, um, he approved. They, he confirmed. He confirmed that he actually gave verbal instructions to the NDLEA. Why would the Attorney General do that when we know from uh, the press statement issued by his um, your uh, Kishamo's press uh, office that the Attorney General himself gave an order? that nothing like this will happen. What changed? We don't know what could have changed, but it appears to me that the plan is that he, would, he should not be sworn in on the 29th of May. And apparently, those who have taken that decision, and uh, they're not stopping, they don't want, they can't, they, they won't stop at anything uh, to, to, get him, to get that to happen. And I think this last-minute effort uh, is uh, targeted at achieving that purpose. Now, um, let me ask you, because the statement that was issued also said, uh, mentioned Chief Bode George and the wife as the people behind this. Who do you think is behind this? Or do you agree that they are the people? Well, I personally, I do not think that. I think that was, uh, because that, that was, that was probably that was probably not accurate. Mm. Um, obviously, one cannot, uh, you know, leave anything to chance when you are looking at the compendium of uh, political adversaries that uh, Mr. Kashamo had. Mm. And when also you consider that uh, Mr. George's uh, wife occupies a very important position in the NDLEA. Mm. However, I don't Personally, you know, my view would be that uh, it's probably a long shot. Mm. Now, uh, Mr. Kamat Shamu is a very important member of the PDP. Um, has he been able to speak to the president of the country? Well, as you know, they have um, been able to secure his phones. And I'm not aware that he has any telephone on him. They took his I phone. Think it's, Sorry. Yes, I do not know. Okay. Okay, I want I to get that think, Yes, I do not think he has uh, the wherewithal to call the president at this time. S okay. Now, now, are you saying that they actually met him and took his phone? What else did they take? What else were they? No, one of the conditions given for the house arrest was okay. that he will surrender his phone. Okay, okay, he surrendered his phone. Okay. But what about you? Did you make any effort to reach anybody in the PDP? 
I've spoken to many people today, and um, all of them are aghast at uh, this kind of incident. And I know many of them have made the efforts to connect with relevant people. Mm. Perhaps that is the reason why they are even agreed, agreeing to a house arrest. Mm. Now, there were these uh, allegations out there that part of the reason this is going on is because the judges in the, in the case pending in court that uh, your client has um, brought them over. What do you say to that? Uh, that is totally irresponsible. You know, whoever would say that has no ounce of, uh, uh, of integrity and or patriotism in him or her uh, to come out like that against a judge who cannot defend himself to me is cowardice mm. such a person should come out and let let us know who he is whoever would say that let him come out boldly into the open and say this judge is corrupt or is in somebody's pocket and give us the evidence of that mm. instead of making all this snide and uh, irresponsible statements mm. in hiding. Now, we know, the one that we know that is in op op or was open, people heard him when he was saying that was um, the statements by uh, former president of the children of Basenjo about your client. Um, he, he mentioned Kashamu as one of the reasons why he left the PDP. D do you think that it's possible that um, he had something to do with what is going on now? Well, you know that in all the processes we have filed in court so far, especially in the fundamental rights application, we have mentioned Chief Obasanjo's name as, a, as the instigator of the abduction plan. So it's no longer an issue of uh, suspicion or something. That really is the position that my client has taken. He believes very strongly that Chief Obasanjo was the instigator mm. of this abduction plan. Mm. He believes that. He's already on oath in court. Mm. Now, so you believe this is an, ab it's still, uh, it's an abduction plan. I want to know, what do you think will happen on Monday when he's driven to court? You don't know the courts. You don't know the proceeding. What do you think will happen from that point? It will be, it will be a very funny uh, situation because, first of all, what the Attorney General ought to do under the law was to have forwarded that request to the court in which he will be the prosecutor. He will be, the Attorney General will be the prosecutor in that extradition proceedings. Mm. So we come before the judge with a valid uh, originating process. And on that basis, he would obtain the warrant required for the arrest of the suspect. That is what the law prescribes. Mm. Now, he has not only jumped the gun by himself deciding to be prosecutor and judge and everything. He has, as I've told you earlier, he has acted in breach of an order that actually said he should stay all action. So I'm wondering what is going to happen in court, whatever court they're going to go on Monday, because it will, lead, it will become a farce. Because the way I see it is the judge would wonder why the attorney general is acting in contempt of the court. And I'm sure that issue will come up on Monday. Mm. Now, you handled uh, Kashamo's case in London, and you're also involved in the case in the United States. Um, what do you think, from what is happening today, what do you think um, this particular thing uh, going on today will impact it will have in the case in, in the United States? Well, the United States uh, actions have been with regard to the uh, unfairness of the existence of the indictment. 15 minutes. Pardon? No, go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Um, if you've done, you might have found out that the first attack on that indictment was made in 2009. And that attack was on the basis of the two judgments of the courts in England. The first judgment had said that the United States government suppressed evidence which 
exonerated Kashambo, that is evidence of an identification parade in which the kingpin of the drug ring that was broken and who had mentioned that they had a West African collaborator said that Kashamu was not the one that he had in mind, that he knows the person, that the person is known to him as Alaji, but Kashamu is not that person he knows as Alaji. He said that to them. They suppressed that evidence. And as a result, the High Court in England nullified the first order of committal made against him. And it was in the second case, there was a second case commenced immediately after that. He was rearrested. And there was a second case. And at the end of that case, the judge not only found that America had not proved that he is the person wanted in the United States, as you may know, under the treaty between England and America, just as between Nigeria and America, the only thing you have to prove to get the person extradited under that treaty is that he is the person. You have to prove his identity. So not only were not they able to prove the identity in England, the judge actually found that there was somebody else. He said, look, not only have you not proven that it is not Kashamu, the evidence has shown me that there's actually somebody else that you know that that is the person that you are looking for, not this man. And he described that man for them. I said, this is the man. This is his name. That is the one you should be looking for, not this man. So we, on the basis of that judgment, we went to the, to, to the United States and said, you need to get rid of this indictment. It's an embarrassment. People keep referring to it. And on that basis, falsely accusing Mr. Kashamu of being involved in drug offenses. Of course, the court said no, they do not recognize the United Kingdom judgment. It's not the same as American judgment. They prefer their own judgment, etc. The second time we came again against the indictment was on the basis of speedy trial. We said since the American government lost the case in England in 2003, they have made no moves against Kashamu for the last 11 years. It was in 2014 we went back there. They have made no moves against him. So on that basis, under the speedy trial right, recognized by the United States courts, get rid of this indictment. They said, no, it is not the fault of the American government that uh, he did not get a speedy trial, that it is because he defeated them in England, and the American government has become demoralized. As a result, they decided not to go after him anymore. So now that's the basis of the new desire to have him abducted, because obviously the judge told them they can't win any extradition against him when he has been exonerated by two courts in England. The judge told them that, the American judge said, the United States government, forget it. Don't even bother yourself trying to extradite this man. You can never win. Why? Because our ally, the British, have already exonerated him. Not Pakistan, not Syria, our ally, in the, the, the British, have exonerated this man. And he's a prominent man in Nigeria. Forget it. So on that basis, the only way out for them is to come by abduction, because they will never win extradition in Nigeria. Mm. Now, I'll, I'll ask you this question. When we interviewed him, which we did uh, recently, he talked about his brother and suggested that he didn't know where his brother is. Um, do you know where his brother is? Uh, his brother is not my client. Okay, but, but you know him very well. Do you have any idea of where his brother is? Because he's central to this case. What, what, what suggests to you that I know him very well? Oh, okay, your client, I mean. Okay, that's okay. Um, let's, let's leave that. Let me ask you now, um, do you think, who do you think within the government, the administration, considering the role he played in this uh, past election and in the PDP, that could change the outcome, influence the outcome of what you consider to be an illegality taking place today and probably on Monday? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that question. I'm saying that right now you are considering what is going on as something illegal and what might happen yes. on Monday as something illegal. Do you, do, do you think there's anybody that could help your client? Have you tried to reach out to the president to see if the president could help your client? Or did the president basically throw him under the bus? Is that what's going on? I, w I wouldn't say that uh, anybody has thrown him under the bus as, as things stand. Because, as I said, 
things are still unfolding. Mm. It is quite prob probable that the president was not aware mm. that this kind of move was going to be made against uh, Prince Kashan. Because I know that this president, the current president, is a man who has always tried to stand for the rule of law. It's quite probable that if he knew about this plan, he would have stopped them on the basis that there's a court order that said you should stop action. He would not have allowed his attorney general to embarrass him by proceeding to violate a court order that was that specifically said stop all action. Mm -hmm. But it's been 12 hours since this started, and he must have heard about it. So if he's not going to do anything to stop it, the assumption is that he approved it. Well, as I said, you know, matters are still unfolding. You know how things work, and it could take a bit of time. But I'm sure eventually uh, uh, common sense will prevail. Okay. So there is no chance. You don't see the possibility that we may see him uh, put in the plane and uh, to America anytime soon? Well, I, what I would say is that it would be a shame. In any event, he has told them they would have only his dead body to put on the plane. But I think it would be a shame if that should happen in the Nigeria that we think ought to be the giant of Africa. Mm. That's the key point, what you said, because we asked his media aide about that threat of suicide, and the media aide was saying that he was just playing, that he didn't mean it that way, that he would kill himself. Are you saying that if, for instance, on Monday, he's taken to a court, and the court says, okay, we are shipping you to America, that he's going to take his life? No, you see, I think sometimes, we, because you are not a lawyer and you are not used to this proceeding, and just like many other Nigerians, there's a simple, you have a simplistic approach to this matter. You don't take a person to the court, and then on that very day, the judge will now say, we're shipping you out to, to America. No. The duty of the judge is to test the evidence of the American. That's his duty. The, the judge is not sitting there as, as a, a, an administrator and just to write, to sign something that has been presented to him by the attorney general. His duty under the law is to tell the American government, represented by the Nigerian Attorney General, to present their evidence to prove that one fact, that this man is the actual man that committed the offense in America, to prove his identity. That's, they have to prove that. They can't just ship him off to America. They have to come before him with evidence to show that he is the one that committed that offense. Now, you will bear in mind that already two courts in England, I found that same evidence to be incredible. They said that evidence is incredible. We don't believe it. It's a lie. Also, we find that these are the actual facts. Two courts in England have found that. Two courts in Nigeria have held that in these circumstances, this man is not a fugitive. One court in America has found that Kashamu is not a fugitive. You cannot extradite anybody who is not a fugitive. You cannot. An American court said he's not a fugitive. Why? Because he has never stepped in America before. He did not escape from America, from justice. He was released legally by courts in England, and he has been living openly in Nigeria. He's not been in hiding. He's not a fugitive. You cannot extradite somebody who is not a fugitive. Mm. In addition to the fact that, of course, it was a case of mistaken identity. So I, I don't think uh, anybody should have any expectation that the, the court is going to say, I'm shipping you out. Because that expectation is going to be completely foolishness. Because in, in view of the evidence, there is no basis for such an expectation. Mm. Now, uh, is there any fear, do you think, based on the action of the government agencies, and uh, is there any fear that if he's allowed to go home, let's say after the proceedings on Monday, that he might go into hiding, that they won't be able to find him. Mr. Kashamu has lived in Nigeria since he was released from England in 2003. Since the court in England found that he is not the one involved in American crime, he has lived openly in Nigeria. He has rebuilt his life, rebuilt his business, rebuilt his family. 
he has become a prominent man in Nigeria. He didn't run away. So is it now, after he has achieved all these things, he will now leave everything and run away. Run away to where? That, that's the question I have, because if the, if the agency, agency, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency that came, if you had made that case to them, look, this man will come to court on Monday, uh, you guys can go. Uh, why would they insist that they will stay there and make sure that they will take him from his house to the courts? You see, Rudolph, you are, you are a very intelligent man. That's exactly how we think, too. That why a man that is prominent, a man who has lived openly, who has never run away, what is really what what is the real plan? Tell us the real plan. It cannot just be that you are operating in accordance with them. There must be something else. Hmm. You are right. It's a, it's a question they need to answer. All right, uh, Mr. Jibola Oluya. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Jibola. Okay. Uh, we will keep following the story. Uh, that was uh, Ajibola Oluya, the attorney for Mr. Tashamo, who is still uh, in his house, under house arrest. Uh, they are going to take him to court on Monday. So we'll keep following the story, and we will give you more uh, insight as they develop. Stay tuned.